Greetings world. We are anonymous. Greetings world. We are anonymous. Welcome to Ta Weekly News, bringing you the weekly top stories that have been filtered through the mainstream media. I'm Evie Hammond. According to the New York Times, Donald Trump may not have paid taxes for 18 years due to a financial loss in 1995 totaling $916 million. The situation has been deemed the Trump loophole as it would appear it is unique to Trump alone, and he's now being referred to as a quote, special interest. The $916 million loss apparently counted as a tax deduction, providing Trump with extraordinary tax benefits derived from the financial wreckage he left behind, as stated in the New York Times report. Trump hails himself a genius for the financial move, as do his supporters, and blames Hillary Clinton for not enacting stricter tax laws when she was a senator in New York. This information was leaked to the New York Times from within Trump Towers, and it's believed a Trump staffer may be responsible. Hillary Clinton is having her own problems with leaked information this week. In a leaked audio recording, Clinton can be heard dismissing millennials as quote, children of the Great Recession, who are living in their parents' basement, unquote. Some are new to politics completely. They're children of the Great Recession. And they are living in their parents' basement. Uh, they feel that they got their education and the jobs that are available to them are not at all what they envisioned for themselves. And they don't see much of a future. She later ridiculed millennials for believing in Bernie Sanders' quote, false promises, which included his pledge for free college. Many have drawn a parallel to her basket of deplorables comment that she used to describe Trump followers. Reports now claim Hillary has cancelled her upcoming joint campaign with Bernie Sanders following the leak. Libertarian, Ron Paul, has recently given praise to the Green Party presidential nominee Jill Stein, while at the same time stating that Libertarian nominee Gary Johnson does not have a crisp Libertarian message. While Paul commended Stein for her stance on issues such as civil liberties and foreign policy, he has not endorsed her. Meanwhile, Gary Johnson still can't think of a foreign leader he admires, and apparently no one has bothered to tell him that the question is a fallacy, there's no such thing as an admirable political leader. We'll see how long it takes him to sort that one out. In the meantime however, Johnson has stated he agrees with both Clinton and Trump, not to vote for Trump or Clinton. In North Dakota, police are continuing to militarize against citizens opposing the Dakota Access Pipeline and protesters are now forced to cover their faces due to the facial recognition technology being used by authorities to spot people they can press charges against. Citizens have already been misidentified, as was the case with Greg Greycloud of the Crow Creek tribe in South Dakota who turned himself into North Dakota authorities after he found a warrant had been issued for his arrest while he was at a barbecue in a different state. While North Dakota dropped the charges against Greycloud, they did so quote, without prejudice, meaning authorities can later revisit the warrant if they choose to do so. The actions of North Dakota's Bureau of Criminal Investigation is being considered institutional racism and racial profiling. Alec Heidel reports on Betty Shelby, the officer who has been charged with felony manslaughter in the murder of 40-year-old African-American, Terrence Crutcher. Despite the state of Oklahoma having already concluded their investigation which found sufficient grounds to indict Shelby, the Tulsa Police Department, Shelby's peers, have decided to conduct an investigation of their own, having no obligation to do so. In the meantime, Shelby has now been placed on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of the new investigation. According to Heidel, the fact that she has not been terminated from her job indicates the investigation will find her actions justified, in spite of the state's findings. The ultimate outcome will not be known until Shelby's trial, which can take years. Video has recently surfaced of a jail inmate who died last year while in custody in a for-profit jail in Texas. 35-year-old Michael Sabi can be heard multiple times pleading to guards, and expressing that he could not breathe. Five guards can be seen on top of Sabi, as another guard pepper sprays him. The following video may be disturbing to some viewers.
According to reports, Sabi continued to plead to officers that he could not breathe as he was taken to a shower, and again as he was ultimately taken to his cell and left on the floor. He was found dead the next morning. Despite the altercation with guards and Sabi's pleas for help, it was recorded that he died from natural causes. Shocking newly released dashcam footage shows Sacramento police officers attempting to run over a mentally ill individual named Joseph Mann before shooting him 14 times and killing him. Again, the following video may be disturbing to some viewers. Police were responding to a call made by residents that man was acting erratically. According to reports, dispatchers apparently told officers he was carrying a knife and gun, but no weapons were found after the shooting. Randy Lazoya and John Tennis, the officers who attempted to hit man with their vehicle, have been placed on modified duty. In World News, DC Leaks recently published a series of documents from George Soros's Open Society Foundations that indicates the Hungarian-American business magnate has been the architect and sponsor of almost every revolution and coup around the world for the last 25 years. Soros has pushed various agendas to pit nations, activist groups, and political organizations against one another, and according to DC Leaks, Soros is also directly sponsoring the Democratic Party, including Hillary Clinton, as well as hundreds of other politicians around the world. New reports now state Soros is profiting from the migration crisis, which the Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban, referred to as an international human smuggling network. In a letter written to the Wall Street Journal, Soros gave an admiral explanation as to why he has chosen to quote, invest, $500 million in migrants, however we now know through the leaked documents that he either had a hand in initiating the crisis, or facilitating it. Canada is in the process of forming a partnership with Soros and the UN to implement private refugee sponsorship programs in other countries, and now critics are calling Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, Soros's latest puppet. In Poland, protests erupted after a proposal to completely ban abortions. On what is being referred to as Black Monday, Polish men and women gathered in the streets to take part in a nationwide strike and demonstration to protest the proposal. Abortion is already illegal in Poland, except for cases of rape incest, threat to the life of the mother, or irreparable damage to the fetus. The proposal would have completely outlawed abortion even in these cases, however since the protests, lawmakers have abruptly reversed their positions. In recent reports, the controversial UK PR firm, Bell Pottinger, received $500 million from the Pentagon to fund a top-secret propaganda program in Iraq. The propaganda included short TV segments that were created to look like Arabic news networks and fake insurgent videos. These were then used to track those who watched them, according to a former employee of the PR firm. The operation was located in the Baghdad Camp Victory headquarters. Former chairman of Bell Pottinger, Lord Tim Bell, confirmed to the Sunday Times that his firm had worked on a quote covert military operation that covered various secret agreements. The US is calling for an investigation against Russia and Syria for war crimes, though they may have little chance of doing so since Russia has veto power at the UN and has blocked attempts to put pressure on Syrian President Bashar Assad's government over allegations of killing, torture, and chemical weapons attacks. According to the Associated Press, the move is in an effort to ramp up the rhetoric against Moscow for its role in the deadly conflict, while also making it potentially harder to restart diplomatic efforts. Russia appears to be moving forward with its long-term strategy for Syria. France is looking to make a new ceasefire effort that would include a UN Security Council vote. In tech news, Yahoo was found to have been cooperating with U.S. intelligence officials by scanning hundreds of millions of Yahoo accounts. The multinational technology company built a custom software program to search incoming emails for specific information requested by the NSA and FBI. Surveillance experts have said this is the first case to surface of a U.S. Internet company agreeing to a spy agency's command to scan all incoming mail, rather than stored messages. It has not yet been determined what information Yahoo has submitted to officials.
Apple has apparently given in to pressure from the FBI, and deliberately weakened its iOS 10 password encryption. The company has traded its hashing algorithm for the iOS 10 to a weaker, more vulnerable SHA-256 with a single iteration, making it possible for hackers to perform brute force attacks to bypass passwords from a standard desktop computer. In a report from IT Ninja, cybercriminals and hacktivists alike are attempting to forge employment contracts with various militant groups. The contracts are specifically aimed to provide digital cyber attacks upon Europe, however, no militant group has agreed to a hacktivist group at this time. According to Europol, it is believed these groups can perform nothing more than a typical website defacing, and concern over this new form of employment opportunity is minimal. However, there are slight concerns about the rise of digital cyber crimes as cyber criminals stay within the shadows of the dark net, from which one can obtain any illicit commodities in which they see fit. This would provide ample opportunity for the current situation to change into a cause for concern. And finally in anonymous news, Op USA is fully engaged. A call has been made to all anonymous members to come together, including but not limited to, hackers, activists, social engineers, and researchers. Within Operation United States we will now make a huge shift in operations. We ask that all come together and join hands for the sake of the innocent of the United States. As so many from the United States have lended a helping hand in so many ops throughout the past years, we feel their effort has somewhat been forgotten. And while the United States government may be one of the most corrupt, we're sure you can only imagine what is heading their way. We ask that all hackers, social engineers, workers, watchers, insiders and anarchists come together to give back to the United States of Anonymous a lending hand. As reported by a non-watcher, under the umbrella of Op USA, various other operations have been re-engaged with the aim of targeting corrupt individuals who work within the United States government. In an effort to update data systems, Anons are being asked to expose all findings using the proper safety precautions, and following the rules of code for obtaining information and guidance through the fellow Anons you fully trust. The following operations that have been re-engaged include, Op CIA, Op FBI, Op Freemasons, Op Illuminati, Op ISIS, Op KKK, and Op NSA. And those are some of this week's top stories that have been filtered through the mainstream media. Thank you for joining us here at Ta Weekly News. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.